You can see you can see his heart rate is running. It's fluctuating. Uh, I guess he's been holding his breath on and off, but uh, his, his heart rate's been running about 70, and he's got 100 percent saturation. And PSVT is paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, and it paroxysmal paroxysmal just means that it's random, it's sporadic. There's no way to predict it, and supraventricular just means that it's happening above the you got the SA node and the AV node, so it's happening at the AV node or above, and the and it's a disturbance in a normal heartbeat, and the tachycardia means that it's fast, and typically if the heart is beating that fast, the un, under normal circumstances your blood goes into your atria, then it goes down into your ventricles, and then it's pumped out to your lungs or it's pumped out to the rest of your body. And in PSVT, you're not allowing enough time for the atria or the ventricles to refill before they're pumping, and so you're getting inadequate blood perfusion or the cardiac output of the heart is diminished to a point where it's not sufficient to maintain the person's overall strength and awareness, so they're going to be lightheaded. Maybe you start getting disoriented and may feel like they've got a little fullness in their chest. It may not be safe for them to walk. Or may not be stable. So there, there's a couple of different things that we can do if someone is having a heart rate that's that fast. Like say, since they're going to be lightheaded and dizzy, we'll we'll get them to we'll get them to lay back and where their thyroid cartilage is and their carotid arteries. We can do what's called a vagal massage, and we can just actually rub. You can rub both sides of the thyroid cartilage. And there's baroreceptors in the carotid arteries, which will sense that pressure, and it will diminish the cardiac output of the heart, and thereby send signals to the vagus nerve to try to slow the heart rate down to a rate that's more suitable, like between 60 and 100. If that doesn't work, they can put pressure on their chest, kind of like they're bearing down to have a bowel movement, and it's it'll actually put pressure in the thoracic cavity as well and it will slow the heart rate down also uh, some people which we we don't do but in some settings in some hospitals they'll actually put ice packs around their face and near their neck but if, if we have no if we have no relief by what we're doing either by a vagal massage or getting put pressure on their thoracic cavity We'll open our drug box and we'll start we'll start an IV on them and we have a medication called a Center or a card and we'll push that on them and it that will chemically do <coughs> excuse me it will chemically defibrillate or chemically shock their heart and for a second or two their heart will actually stop and when it starts back beating it will be in a normal sinus rhythm like this is and the like the sinus the SA node we call it a sinus rhythm because it's normal because it's his rate is between 60 and 100 and so he's in a normal sinus rhythm as opposed to a rhythm that's it's a tachycardic rhythm like PSVT so when the heart does start back after we chemically defibrillate it then it will be in a rate that's closer to the 60 to 100 range it may actually start back at a rate of 110 or 120 but typically it will start back at or below 100 and so that's how we treat PSVT and there's there's no way to predict it when it's going to happen we can only treat it when it does and oftentimes it will subside on its own with no treatment mm -hmm. typically the calls that we run on we we end up pushing adenosine or adenocard on the patient and it, it will make them feel for a brief second like they're going to lose consciousness and but when their heart starts back after just a split second or a second and a half of you know a systole or no heartbeat when it does start back it'll be in a normal mode cool. so how often do you, do you see this say? it's rare i mean we i've i've seen it in out of all the calls i've ever been on i've probably ran on six or seven so maybe you may see it once a year you may see it once every six months um, 
it all depends. I mean, we, out of, you know, through, since I'm not here every day, I'm only here every third day, you know, the other shifts run on the calls as well. So, just personally, I've only pushed it in a car about six or seven times. And yeah. It's like a really serious thing. Like, yeah, I mean, it's typically you're not looking at a condition that's going to be fatal. You're looking at a condition that could be fatal if, it, if left untreated. But more times than not, we're able to treat it or it subsides before it gets to a point where they're having trouble. Cool. Do that, do that thing where you're being on the chest. Just so you can get that on the, the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just per, first say, like, uh, this is what it this is what it would look like. Okay. And you can see the these hearts in a rate now that's what we would call normal sinus rhythm. He's moving around a little bit, so you're seeing a lot of what we call artifact or the electrical activity that's not due to the cardiac conduction. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit one of the electrodes repeatedly and make it look like it would look if he was actually in PSVT. That actually looks a little bit more like ventricular tachycardia instead of supraventricular. But anyway, it's it's going to be a rate that's not normal sinus rhythm.